Hey everybody, I'm Blitz. Welcome to a game called Just One Line. This is a story-based game, kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure style novel, where you go through the world picking your adventure, choosing your different quests, gearing up your, your little feller however you want to gear him up, and uh, having a good time. So this is a sponsored video, uh, but it's a game that I've been having a ton of fun with. And if you are interested in this game, right below uh, the video in the video description, there is a link that you can pick it up on Steam on your own. So this is an early access game as well, and they keep adding a bunch of uh, free content to the game. I think one of the next patches is gonna be a quest editor that allow players to make their own quests and then share those quests with the community using the Steam Workshop. So it's got a lot of cool stuff like that in it. Uh, a lot of this game does focus on your choices as well. So you get a lot of uh, consequences based on how you play it. And we'll see that here in a little bit. So it does add a lot of replayability to the game too. That's what I like about it because you unlock things and then you bring it back and then you can use that the next time. So this over here is the world map itself. We have like a cemetery down here. We've got a swamp that has dragons. We've got like this weird tree going on. There was the dwarven home in the mountains there's also a volcano back here and I think that's like some sort of mages guild or something like that so all of these places on this map we can go to and we're gonna start it off uh, so there are four different races we have elves we have dwarves we have orcs and we have humans I've only unlocked the humans and the dwarves uh, so we're gonna play you know let's play today with the dwarves I like playing with the dwarves they have plus one cunning and cunning uses interaction so there's kind of three different ways to play the game you can kind of brute force thing with a uh, power you can use your wit which is interaction using memory logic or magic and then cunning itself so used with interactions that require to be persuasive diplomatic or stealthy so it's kind of like a rogue kind of class we also have like a cleric or a mage and then this would be like a warrior if you will so I'm gonna put my additional point towards cunning so we have three different cunning points and uh, let's give this guy a little bit better hairstyle that one's okay that one sure we'll give him that one and then a beard he has to have a beard perfect and blue blue hair let's give him a nice no, that's too bright. There, nice brown beard. Cool. Uh, we can also pick a background. There is the Stonecutter's background, uh, who is like the main the main Dwarven Guild. We have the Wicked Fellowship. Hmm, related power. Can you use power from the... Ooh, this one's kind of cool. I haven't tried that one out. We try that one. Now let's try that one. Let's do something I've not done before. There's also this one, which is a temple. You can be the cleric there. But we're going to try the, the Wicked Witch Fellowship, I think it's called. The professionals of this job enter the dungeon, kill the monsters, take the loot. If you join the wick, Tricked Witch Fellowship, there's one word to describe you are looking for. Adventure, but also treasure. They're specialists in rune exploration and doing heroic deeds. Also develop a curious luck that seems to help them in the most peculiar ways. So let's try it. I always like that. Uh, there's also two different modes to play, immersive or non-immersive. And we're going to play this. Uh, it gives a little bit more background information. Hopefully I can make the video last a little bit longer with that. Cool. So we're in the tavern. We're in the Little Horn Inn quest board. We're going to start off by going into the armory and seeing what we can do. Ooh, we can get a whip. Wow. We can we can use a whip. Um, get our. We're going to start it off. We have 100 coins. And it looks like we can get the club, sickle, or dagger. We can also get a quarterstaff or a saber. Let's start it off getting maybe a dagger. We'll buy the dagger. And it automatically equips. Then we'll go into this. So we did have a lot of the cunning skill. And the armors give us, that's a little power. We have a robe, there we go. So like a bard, a bard thing. Fashionable, we'll be a fashionable bard guy. We'll take that, sure. Uh, there's also some rings and then temporary buffs that you can have that increase things as well. Uh, so we'll do that. And now we have to find some quests. We can also look here that shows our our news, where different completed quests and stuff like that. Oh, there we go, that's the leaderboard. Shoot, okay, we'll, we'll not do that for a while. And we can see, so laments in the cemetery. Visitors have been terrorized by spine chilling lamentations the last few days. So that one is protection and rescue. We could do that one. And it's difficulty. If you have the uh, immersive mode on, you don't get all of this type and urgency. You don't get that stuff. What else do we have? We have a goblin invasion. It's a social, okay. We also have a missing child. Oh, okay. And a fist fights in the tavern. Oh, you know what? Should we start with that? Let's start with that. We'll start with a nice fist fight in the tavern. 50 gold to begin with. We'll try it out and see how this goes. All right. So our adventurer heads out into the world. Across the world he goes and into the tavern. There we go. A small crowd of yokels and scoundrels has gathered in the center of the inn. They've apparently knocked over tables and stools to make room for the two men brawling in the middle. They're making a mess. All around them, are all sorts of people are cheering for one or the other, betting rudely and annoyingly cursing and burping. 
The two men lying down try to recover from what seems to have been a sound beating in the ring. Continue. Two more contestants, also quite drunk, just begin a new fight, rallying the people inside the inn. Even more judging by his apparel, one must be a stonecutter. Hey, that's us. A burly, middle-aged dwarf with fists as big as his head. Wow. And clearly more devoted to fighting than commerce. The other is a young boy with pale skin and very dark hair, wearing a long robe. Definitely too wide. Okay. Uh, let's try to intervene peacefully since we're kind of cunning. Use your brilliant diplomatic skills. Also help by a high level of intoxication of the present crowd. You make your way through the mob with an agile jump. You manage to climb onto a table. Gentlemen, heed my words. You begin to a uh, pointless monologue, quickly speaking, sometimes rhyming, rhyming? And with complicated words which are incomprehensible for most people here. Some laugh with amusement, some are confused, some have no idea what you're talking about. After attracting everyone's attention, the two brawlers stop and begin listening to you. Ah, so good. We stop the fight. We get the money. So we can follow the boy. He's frightened and runs away. Let's follow him and see what happens. You follow him outside. You see him head left towards some fisherman huts. You manage to stop him in an alley. Ask him why he ran away. He says he noticed your curiosity in him and didn't want to be recognized. Alcohol, gambling, or illegal brawling are forbidden to clerics. Oh, he'd be in big trouble if the saints were here of this. Most likely lose his powers as an apprentice. <laughs> so we can we can take his gold. We'll ask him who he is. Is Gavin apprentice of the temple? Let me go. Okay, so we'll let him leave. He might come back later, uh, in in our adventure since we let him go. And let's go speak to the dwarf now. You're get eager to hear what the stonecutter story as you approach him. Ask why a respectable dwarf like him has been creating chaos in the village tavern in the past few days. My daughter should marry one of us. Answers sobbing the stonecutter. So a dwarf. Mm. Ask what the daughter has to do with broader. Okay, show interest in the girl. <laughs> hey, buddy, you got a daughter? Uh, let's see what he, the daughter has to do. Uh, wanted to give a lesson to the long-legged son of a gun he's met in the inn. His daughter wants to marry someone who belongs to the tall races, and he can't accept that. Only a dwarf, possibly a noble stonecutter, is worthy of my daughter. Okay, uh, show interest in the girl. The dwarf looks at you, curling his thick mustache with a finger. Yes, that could work. You're a fine-looking guy. I do have a very nice beard there. Look at that one. I uh, find a way to introduce you to my daughter. I'm sure she'll change her mind and decide to marry one of our sides. That's good. Let him be and return to your affairs. Good. You return to the center of the inn. We are done. We'll take our monies and get a handshake. Perfect. Thanks to you, the tavern is now safe from drunkards and scoundrels. Without the continuous brawling, the inn can go on a tranquility. So we got uh, a little bit of renown and a little bit of fame and a little bit of money. And we got some uh, relation with the commoners. Cool. Continue on. Now that does put me at 80 money. Uh, we don't really have enough. We could get a quarter staff, but that's not too much better. Maybe we should wait to see if we can pick something else, like a cane. Oh, what's this? Oh, a pickaxe. That's what we need. 225 for a pickaxe. And we could also get, like, ooh, okay, some leather armor for 135. Oh, sea dog suit. Yar. Oh, a handy suit. That's kind of nice. It gives us some wit as well. Scoundrel suit and a jester. Oh, we need a jester suit. A dwarf and a jester suit. That's that's not not very dwarfy. <laughs> anyway, alignments in the cemetery. What else do we have? Goblin invasion. We have an unarranged marriage. Oh, is this? Let's try this one. Unarranged. Ah, this. I am respectable member of the Stonecutters elite. So this is. We're gonna go. Yeah, it's the Mary of the Tall Bean. So this is the same dude. He's given us a new quest to stop his daughter from marrying the tall one. All right. How exhausting. You thought after climbing up these steps, come on, don't pretend to be fit. You're out of breath. That's me. You managed to reach the main access and get in. You find yourself a huge, dark, crumbling hall. These ruins seem to have been abandoned for centuries. You try to catch sight of a finger among the statues, something similar to a dwarf, but it's far, but it's too dark to find your bearings. All of a sudden, you hear a scuttle of many feet. Uh-oh. Well, to do a small green eyes blink at you intermittently. Soon you realize they're not lights, but eyes. Oh, boy. It's a cave spider. It's lunging at us. Oh, shoots, man. We're in combat. The cave spider is undamaged and ready to engage in combat. Let's attack it. Snap. Ouch. It bit me. <laughs> the cave spider has been defeated. You are victorious. Hor horrible spider isn't really a problem. You focus again on the huge hall looking for the stone cutter. As you suspect, you got the place wrong. There is no dwarvish underground city of the realm as far as you know. Suddenly you hear a whistle and you see a little flame burning in the corner of your right. You recognize the silhouette of a dwarf coming from a hole in the wall. But it's not just any dwarf. It's that thug you met in the cavern or tavern a while ago. Adventurer, come here. You do as he bids, and he leads you down a narrow and crooked tunnel. You follow him with some difficulty, and a little breathless behind the dwarf, who's light and agile over the stone. Okay, 
Um, Excavation about the Dwarven runes. Runes? What runes? The dwarf explains these are not runes at all. The crumbling room you saw is not abandoned. Simply doing some renovations in the area. Ah. Okay. Ask about his task. He explains that we stonecutters pass on our wealth from generation to generation. On the wedding day, as he has been the traditions for centuries, the bridegroom receives a coffer filled to the brim with gold and jewels. For this reason, stonecutters want their sons and daughters to marry other dwarves, preferably from the stonecutters guild. Oh. Okay, so there's... Uh, she wants to marry a tall guy. Okay, ask why. what kind of husband. Be a dwarf for certain. Yep. Okay, Brenna is stubborn. That's the name. Love with those bean poles. Tall people. Uh, let's respect the way. Man or an elf? I don't know. Well, I don't why. I don't want to say that. Never insult a dwarf by telling him to marry an orc. After walking several meters down a tunnel in the dark, the light of the door is torched to grass. Okay, uh, reeling a town built into the stone of a huge cavern. Oh, I love dwarven caverns. Magnificent, isn't it? The dwarf smiles. Anyway, my name is Tordur. He nods in his introduction. Great stone buildings lie before you. Intricate designs and colonnades surrounded by modest stone structures. Okay, continue. Squares teeming with people of every race. Merchants uh, trading to lure potential buyers. Booths of spices, ripe fruits, and strange animals envelope you in their sense of vibrant colors. You arrive in front of a nice house on one of the main streets. Report to me as soon as you have some clues in the identity, identity of this third-rate womanizer. Start looking for the Emporium. The owner is well-informed. Okay, so we're at the Emporium now. Welcome, traveler. You can find everything at Griffin's Feathers. Ah, sometimes, something, or sometimes something you would never expect. A little sharp voice welcomes you inside the shop. After a while, you notice a tiny creature, barely taller than a boot, talking. Hey, haven't you met a gnome before? Oh, it's a gnome. A little man fixes large pointy hat on his head and shoulders. How can I help you? Uh, ask if he knows the stonecutter, your employer. Two door, door door. Yes, I know him. Stone cutters are well known and powerful in the city. They say the old dwarf is losing his mind. You know, he's really concerned about his daughter. He spends all night in the tavern above ground getting drunk and brawling. Okay, so he's beating up the, the tell people. Nobody, like nobody down here knows about his troubles. You can get a drunk in her own tavern. Oh, interesting. So let's see. Let's talk about some latest news. People have been nervous lately. There's the stonemason strike and the west entrance reservation was suspended. Oh. Tells you that people are afraid of the recent violent attacks on the surface world. There's a great excitement. A live concert tonight. Dustin Bevere. One of the most famous minstrels in the realm. Oh. Okay. Minstrel. <laughs> I don't care about the, the other stuff. Because that's kind of what we are. We're kind of a bardy guy with a dagger. Minstrel is an elf with the long blonde hair. He's a celebrity. Oh, this is the... this is, the, the the girl's got a crush on him. He also tells the famous bard is loved by a woman. Yep. And envied by men. The girl who listens to his music go crazy for him. Makes the boys angry whenever they see him. Unfortunately, the gnome doesn't have any more information. Okay. Uh, more information about the turmoil. Authorities are investigating. Shield brothers are really going against the king, plotting to take over. Coup d'etat. Uh, business is great. Okay. Why don't the city... Oh, he's having smugglers stealing rare goods from the delivery boys. Okay. Leave the Imperium. Go back to the main square. Let's go into the market. Market is one of the corners of the square. You can see stands in the road, not far from the city center. Have taste in these sweets. Calls an elf with a hooked nose. Ooh, candy dates, fresh meat! Shouts a big dwarf from his butcher stand. Aching joints and love sickness and aching. Ladies and gentlemen, try my miraculous poultice. Claims another with a fashionable turban. Ah, it's the market. Okay. Uh, ooh, if they know something about the minstrel, yeah. The th answer three, that elf has driven all the girls in the realm mad, especially young stonecutters. They believe there's a scam perpetrated against the richest families. The elf, after marrying the women and taking the treasure as given a stonecutter, runs away and never comes back. Oh. Is he is he actually good? Minstrel is a terrible player. Oh, okay. People despise his music. It, that isn't unusual. But the women worship him. He's not even particularly handsome. So he's bad musician. And he's not handsome. He must be like a, a typical Void Band member. All right. Magical instrument, which can charm any woman with a few notes. It's a magical lute. The three sellers talk to each other excitedly. Okay. Huh. Okay, let's talk about the lute. Three merchants can't say anything else about the lute. They suggest you go to another seller who's down the road, an expert regarding... Okay, information. So, about Brennan. Um, doesn't know much about the girl. Father's worried about her wealth. Daughter's wants to marry the tall bean. We already know that. Can impress him. Uh, we can buy things for her. No, thank you. We don't need to buy nothing. We gather enough information. Go back to the house. 
And let's go tell... Oh, we're back at his house. For his huge, two big stairways in the center. Brother tells you he was warned about your arrival. He leads you up the stairs. Here a girl is singing her heart out. It must be Brenna. Her voice is coming from a room down the hall in his office. Tudor, Tordor is completely caught up in his own business on his desk. A dozen of paper, ink bottles, cool pens, and several money bags. Tell me he discovered about the magical loot. Oh, he's horrified. His daughter has been bewitched by the scoundrel's magic. I knew she was sucked in as a musician. Uh, I know good music when I hear it. We sang wonderful songs at the tavern, says the dwarf, emphasizing each letter with his fists on his desk. Uh, go to the city hall. Speak to the stonecutter's families or to the loot seller who's in the shop down the road. Okay, let's let's go back. We'll go back. We don't need to tell him about the minstrel because we kind of already did. Let's go to the instrument seller's shop. Uh, plan in mind, you need a loot. It appears identical to the one owned by the elf. He sees you coming and welcomes you with a big smile. Merchant about the weird loot. He tells you he knows of it. And there's an old legend about a beggar and his loot. The beggar managed to get a gold mane from a now extinct animal and used the hair to make strings of his loot. Oh, be yours? We don't have that much. Merchant likes your spirit? Yes! And we only we don't have a hundred money either. We only have thirty. So we're oh we're just gonna go to the theater. It's late. The concert is about to start. You easily elude his bodyguard. A huge orc is sleeping, wearing a coat with a big elf's face painted on it. Okay. You get inside the minstrel changing room. There's a curtain covering. The, how did we get in here? Without making a sound, you hide yourself behind some boxes and stage costumes left over from the previous show. Dustin's back is towards you as he sings to himself. He's really off key. He doesn't know you're here. You spy the loot tucked inside a. Precious leather case with silver embroidery placed atop a stool. Creep over to the loot. Oh, you get close to the loot without being noticed. We're gonna steal the loot. We're gonna steal and leave. Oh, we got it. You hear the crowd making a ruckus. You look back in the empty stage. Things are heating up. There's no sign of the minstrel or his henchmen. You look around ahead to the theater exit. There's a crowd of girls, miserable and disappointed, stretching out past the theater. A large arched door is the external square. You see Torador comforting his tearful daughter. So we can steal the magic loot. Or go talk to let's go talk to them. Because we're a dwarf and that's the dwarfy thing to do. He thanks you and slips you a bag of coins, the reward you've agreed on. Your quest is successfully ended. And you say goodbye to the dwarves and head back to the tavern. Yes! We did it! Nice! So we got a little more of this one. A little more renown and fame. We lost some honor though. Really? Because we stole it. That makes sense. And we lost some rep with the woodland keepers, but we got a bunch with the stone cutters. Oh, and 160 money. Hot diggity dog, that's awesome. What do I get to do next? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's see what we can buy. 240 money. Should I get more armor? There's a dandy suit. Dandy, isn't it dandy? Or the jester suit. Whoa, we can't afford that yet. Maybe a, a weapon. 240 monies. A cane? Ah, uh, what can I? I can buy. I can buy a pickaxe. Oh, we can look at these two. Okay, great. Ruby, greater power. We could go for ooh, greater wit. Why it garnet a superiority? That's one of each. Wow. It's kind of expensive. Greater. Wow. Two of each. Amethyst to greater protection. Okay. So a negative two damage. Quartz of health. Let's. Huh. So that's the same thing, I think, as health. Let's go. Let's go save up our money and try to get the ruby of. Um, sapphire. Nope. Sapphire? Where's the, the cunning? Amber of greater cunning. That's 300. Uh, let's get that. That pickaxe first. I like that idea. A dwarf carrying a pickaxe gives us a little bit of uh, hit points and some higher damage. And also used up all of our money. Oh well. What do we get next? Troubles with bandits, lemons in the cemetery, goblin invasion, a missing child, or rats. Let's do rats in the basement because we get a beer at the inn for my gratitude if we take care of the rats. Oh, you arrive at old Rennie's house and immediately. It takes you to the hatch. But he is serious. Good thing we got our pickaxe. While you're both crossing the room, he mumbles to himself. Keep turning it, looking at you. I asked for help of a real hunter. Oh, great. I hope you know what you're doing. There was a time when you could count on the Shield Brothers recruits to manage these things. But now goes to common people, like the hounds, to take up arms and protect people of the rain. Actual warriors can be hired only by nobles and rich men. As if that wasn't enough, it seems even as they're losing their mind now. Better cut through the chase. There's some work to be done here. He opens the hatch in the basement. Since you are here to help him, you would be really grateful if you could also find his cat. Okay. <laughs> yes, let's barter again for a better reward. Hey, we got 10 extra coins. Yes. Uh, uh, should we ask him about his kitty? Uh, close the poor little beast in the basement to hunt rats, but the morning after is no trace of it. Okay. Uh, the basement is a mess and very stinky. Look for animal signs. You find a big crack. 
and a wall behind a half-eaten piece of furniture. Whoa! The animals were eating the furniture? So if we close it, then it won't work. Let's... We can go tell them there's no rats, and we take our $10 and go. Uh, let's squeeze through the crack. Let's go a little bit deeper. Find yourself in a huge system of tunnels. Now you can walk normally. The place is rather dark, but groups of glowing cave mushrooms guarantee enough visibility. You start exploring. You find a big rounded cave full of rats in the middle of it. Inside a filthy nest, there's a giant rat surrounded by its brood. <laughs> yeah, nope, nope, and out of there. Nope, nope, nope. Coming down there wasn't a brilliant idea. Run away before the beast gets too upset. <laughs> yes, we're leaving. Uh, towards the exit, a small tunnel you didn't see before. You can you can hear movement behind it, but rats are far away now. You get closer and you see tunnel splits into two. On the right side, you can see a weak bluish luminescence coming from the end. On the left side, you hear a meow. It's probably the cat. Let's go left and follow the meowing. We get the kitty. Uh, meowing gets more and more intense. Randy's cat must be one of those big fatty ones. Uh, you reach a narrow fissure. You look into it, and two big shiny eyes appear. You jump out of your skin. You can't believe your eyes. There's a cat on the other side, but it's tiger size. What? Okay, let's go into it. Take a look at this giant cat. Okay, uh, dimensions aside, you look docile. You get to the fissure. The big cat welcomes you and purrs, and it pushes up against the wall, trying to rub itself on you. Aw, take a look at this giant cat. Okay, let's do that. You have no idea what's going on down here. Everything is simply bigger. Uh, let's leave it here? Sure. This cat can go. You're an adventurer, not animal control. Oh. Well, we let the cat go. Uh, let's follow the luminescence. Let's look. Follow a passage until you reach another cave, which is smaller this time. Here you find a source of luminescence, an old elf meditating on the ground. He's covered by a fabric, tied on his hips, and his bare skin lights up the whole cave. You stand there speechless for a while. You've never seen or heard anything like it before. The elf has eyes closed, and he's perfectly still. <laughs> Touch him. <laughs> you cautiously approach the elf, but as you do, luminescence emanating from his skin becomes brighter. It starts to become difficult and painful to keep your eyes open. Get closer. Ugh. Oh, we took damage. <laughs> uh... You take a few steps further, but the luminescence becomes blinding. In fact, you have to cover your eyes with your hand. You feel your skin burning painfully. Touch him. Touch him. Ooh. Ow! Took more damage. You cover short distance between you and the slim <laughs> luminescent figure in front of you. You grate your teeth, bearing the devastating burning and blinding light. You stretch your hand to el Elf's bald head. It feels like touching a red-hot piece of iron. But you can't take your... Uh-oh. Hey! We got, we got an extra power. Pain starts to fade. Feel unusual enemy energy running through you. The light invades the cave. Now everything becomes whitish until suddenly, with a flash, the elf disappears. The left are some little spheres of light floating about. The cave is empty. Nothing more to do here. Go back to the intersection. We go back to Remy. And, uh... Well, he's not satisfied with your work. We didn't get our beer. But we did get extra power and ten money. That's alright. I'll take that. And there's a giant cat roaming around down there somewhere. So what's next? Now we do we do heal up every time we come back. Um, so that's awesome. We didn't really get anything good there. So we're just going to have to go do another quest because we can't buy anything with 25 money. So what do we get? The Lambeth's in the Cemetery, Goblin Invasion, Missing Child, Enchanted Waters, Troubles with the Bandits. Let's do the uh, Missing Child. So this one is urgent, but it's average difficulty. We'll try it. it. has four days remaining. We get 150 money if we can find the kiddo. Oh, you arrive at the village, one of the many scattered in the kingdom. For decades, nothing dangerous has happened. The people live in peace because of the Treaty of the Four Races. In the square, there is some people busy working. Ask the men what they know about the missing child. They know little of the disappearance. The only useful information is learn where the child lives. Okay, so we can go back and talk to the kid's parents. His parents are covered in tears. Oh, we can try to alleviate their suffering. He thanks you for your kind words and tell you what Timmy did that day. Last time he was seen, he was in the woods. He was seen playing with his friend Lucas, who lives here and here. Lucas. Okay, let's go talk to Lucas. His parents let you enter. You ask the boy what you want to know. He says they were playing hide-and-seek in the fields almost sunset when Lucas called Timmy back to go home, but he did not answer. Okay, so we can go with him to the fields? He reluctantly agrees to follow you. You arrive at the fields. The wheat is tall, and some birds are perched on scarecrows a short distance away. What happened to Timmy? Kid looks scared. Oh, you calm him down, encourage him, tell you what happened. He says something happened in the fields. He heard Timmy scream and saw some birds fly away, so he ran home. Kid shows you the place where he saw his friend Timmy the last time, then he ran home. Okay, let's uh, let's look at the scarecrow. It's come to the birds, birds fly away. It's unsettling if the birds do not think so. Dry your weapon and slice his arms. What a horrible scream. What? The scarecrow attacked us? Shoot. Okay, let's attack it again. Okay, we we attacked a scarecrow. We're like Don Quixote and a giant windmill. Give the final blows to the pieces of the scarecrow. 
What you think happened was strange. You ask yourself, what is happening? Okay, approach the men and ask them some questions. Tell you the kids play with the scarecrows often, or they hide and seek in the wheat. Okay. Let's go see if we can find little traces. Can't find anything. Just crushed grains and messy footprints in the mud. Go back to the square. Go to the tavern. Okay, we'll do that. Very distant place. Uh, there's a man drinking alone. Go to the talk to the drunk man. The old man drinks the last sip of the bottle. He says he deserves it after a victory in the woods from a long time past. Okay. Missing kid. He is sorry and too old to go into the woods searching for him. It is somewhere else. Ask about the woods. Oh. A long story, but he is thirsty. Let's buy a drink for him. He starts telling you many years ago some strange creatures. How oh, we lost money. Invaded the woods and began pillaging villages. Killing and stealing. Therefore, you went for some hounds to start hunting them. Hounds are a people group. They finally found the lair and launched their final attack. By the way, if you're looking for the child, this is the place you would have searched. The evil always returns. Great. There's something in the woods. Reach the woods. Birds singing. We're going to follow the tracks. Let's do that. Lost track of directions. Walk for hours. You see a cave. You get close. Two gnolls ambush you. Ouch. Okay. Uh, we're in trouble. So the good thing is, in, in this game, we have a lucky shot. Uh, one time per quest, we get to use the lucky shot. And this might straight up kill somebody. Okay, and then we'll attack. That's a free move as well. Nice. The gnolls have been defeated. You are victorious. But we only have two hit points now. The cave is damp. Weak sounds come from within. We're going to go in with stealth since we are a stealthy character. You arrive in a small room full of bottles and vials. Alchemical? Alchemical? Uh, ingredients and smelly potions in a cage. You see a little boy in a quarter. The witch. Oh, there's a witch. Busy in the preparation of some magic brew beyond her in the table is a big ceremonial knife. <gasps> can I? Can I? Can I sneak out of there with the kid? Open the cage quietly. The witch does not notice you. Get up. Get out of there. You step outside the cave. Put him on the shoulder and run. Yes. We got the kid back. Awesome. Oh, we got a lot of we got a lot of fame and we got a lot of morality here too. Ooh. Plus two trap damage reduction. Pathfinder. Nice. Nice. I like that. 145 money too. Praising you as a hero. We have done it. We have become the hero that the people desire. And more importantly, we got money. 170. It's not enough for buying anything, is it? I could buy that dandy suit, but I think I want to save up for the jester. Because it's three more hit points, and we get one additional cunning on that. So, 350 is the next one. Or, yeah, we could do that, or I could save up for that ring yet. Uh, the, no, what is it? Amber, greater cunning. That's two. Okay, let's see what else we get for quests. Enchanted waters, troubles with bandits, laments in the cemetery, or goblin invasion. We'll try this one. Type social. I'm good at this. We're good at social skills. On a journey. To a village occupied by the goblins. You think about how to introduce yourself when you get there. Hi, I'm Blitz. I'm a dwarf. You're a goblins. You cannot kill them all by yourself. On the way, you meet a small goblin with a big floppy bag on his shoulder. You both stop about 10 meters apart and stare at each other for a while. Uh, his face looks vaguely familiar, but as you know, all goblins look alike. He waves goodbye at you and he seems friendly. I don't remember seeing a goblin before. Okay, uh, ask about the clan. Goblin says the shaman is taking control of the village and soon will rule the whole realm. He says the shaman has extraordinary powers and no one can go against him. But goblins are a pretty cocky race. You don't take this information too seriously. You look at the goblin as he leaves. In any case, he's a pretty strange guy. Okay. Uh, you get back to your way and bump into the hound squad. They advise you this is the, the attackers. Uh, go back and the, you tell them you're an adventurer who's come to help with the matter. Small group seems skeptical, but let you pass. Say that you're a wise man, and we can offer services as a counselor. We'll do that. The goblin looks up and down from his expression. He seems to be focusing a lot, trying to understand, but the little brain words, you don't look like what you say you are, but the shaman will know for sure. He immediately orders two guards to escort you through the village. While he reports to the shaman, take him to the shack and keep an eye on him, or does the fat guard as he leaves. The guards take you to the village square. On the way, you see hundreds of goblins. They're everywhere. Oh, great. So we're in the middle of a goblin invasion now. In streets, in houses, and in the fields. Many of them are armed, others are not. You also see females and children. It is really an entire clan. Huh. You see a mill. Odd pictures painted on the wall surrounded by rough tents. The place must be where the shaman lives. You meet the village inhabitants, followed by goblins pushing them to move work in spears and sticks. They cry for help, but the little guards always hush them quickly. You get to your destination, a small stack, shack, made out of thin trunks. You enter and wait. Okay, let's ask her information about the shaman. 
Shaman have great power. He used power, crash all enemies of goblins, says one of the guards. The whole clan serves and worships him due to his magical knowledge. Okay. Uh, let's try to wait for the fat goblin to come back. You wait for the goblin you spoke with to return. Two guards don't talk much. Okay. We'll continue. Oh, okay. Now, now we get to do things. Uh, you get closer to the door and speak to the men inside. You manage to convince them to let you in. The doors open. Several hands grab you and drag you inside. The inn is very crowded. Women and children and some old person plus a dozen armed and furious men. Two of them are hounds and they ask you if you are here to free them. Plan a sortie. The chaos following is going to allow you to easily reach a shaman. Oh, we're going to go in and assassinate. Tell you the people you're here to free them. Well organized sortie, the goblins will have no chance. Your words give them courage. Good. Take advantage of the chaos and go to the mill, completely unnoticed. Yes! Okay. Whole village is in chaos. Humans and goblins are everywhere, running and screaming and fighting. You manage to get to the mill, avoiding the skirmishes, and hide behind a wall. At that entrance, you notice a fat guard giving orders to a handful of armored goblins. There are more inside for sure. Let's climb the wall and try to get in the mill's windows. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, you head around the mill without being noticed and reach the side of the building through the window. You begin putting crates of... Uh, putting crates on the wagon just below the window. Then you manage to get inside and find yourself on the upper floor. A ladder leads downward where you can see a fat guard talking to the bearded goblin, wearing many necklaces, who must be the shaman. <gasps> oh, so we can jump in and kill him, or we can threaten him. And Let's do that. Threaten him and convince him to leave. You whistle and draw the attention of the two goblins who are beneath you. Oh, this is not good. The fat guard flinches while the shaman makes a surprised expression. You start threatening him and telling him to abandon the village. But the goblin doesn't seem to be scared. He orders his guards to catch you. You didn't suspect this result. So the only thing you can do is turn around and run. Once you're out of the building, you see a handful of goblins in front of you, ready to fight. You have no chance but to fight back. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, let's do a lucky shot. Maybe I can kill him. Ooh. Okay. That was decent. And we'll attack again. Nice. Goblins have been defeated. We did lose two hit points. You knock out many goblins around you. You scare the others who step back. Uh, another horde of little creatures. So let's run to the end. Better not try your luck. Many goblins are coming. Oh, so we didn't complete that mission. We failed it. Uh-oh. <laughs> that poor town. Oh, no. We did get some more renown here. All right, guys. So we didn't get any more money for that. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Enchanted water troubles with bandits. We could do, like, the troubles with bandits here. Uh, we could try this one. It's protection and rescue. We'll try that real quick. Let's see how it rolls. Okay. We arrive at the village in early morning. You talk to uh, the old man. He doesn't want ha any gold to offer. The shield brothers of the fortress up in the hills don't want to send their warriors. So they sent us. Right. Uh, okay. Don't abandon us. So the old man, you leave his house thinking you should help him anyway. You told us to leave. So, probably the best way to think about drinking a couple beers. So, you go to the tavern after drinking the long journey. and stress having thought so much, you start to feel tired and you fall asleep on the counter. You're awakened by the frightened cries of the villagers who are running everywhere. The boy enters the tavern uh, while the bandits are raiding the village. Just get out and stop the attack. <laughs> Great. We're going to die. You reach the town squares where you see a tattooed man with long hair giving orders to his minions. You draw his attention and the man walks towards you ready to fight. Uh, let's talk to him. He steps in front of you. Your chit-chat amuses him. He listens to you. Tell him the terrible and totally fake curse <laughs> that falls on the raiders in this village. Yes, let's do that. He's not scared by your curses, and his jaw drops for a moment. Tell him nobody has tried to raid the village. Oh, let's tell him his... Yes, his men will suddenly start to die. He stares at you firmly, holding his club. He doesn't look scared. Show him the village doesn't even have a warrior to protect it because of the curse, I'm guessing. He fell for it. <laughs> he takes a step back and orders his men to gather and retreat. As soon as he tells you the curse, he starts going away frightened. Nice. That was easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, we got a lot of rep with the commoners and some with the stone cutters. Good deal. Good deal. That was awesome. Okay. Now, do we get anything cool? We should be able to buy the next item, which would be, uh, oh, wait. I thought that was 225 money or something. I can't buy anything again. Man. We got we got to do Enchanted Waters, Laments in the Cemetery, or Alchemical 
all chemical supplies. But I tell you what, guys, the time is up for this video. If you would like to see more, I would encourage you to stay tuned. If this video gets enough views, we'll definitely do more of our little adventure here. Uh, also, if uh, you are wanting to play this game on your own, choose your own adventure, then I would suggest that you go ahead and check out the link down below in the video description uh, to get it on Steam for yourself. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. And keep your stick on the ice. We'll catch you next time.